Hamilton, Fox News contributor and founder of Golden Together, uh, joins me now. Of course, climate change is going to come into this debate. Are you surprised? Well, because they're obsessed with it. It's their religion, the, this climate extremism. And, you, and, and Justin Trudeau, there's a classic example of what we see now on the left, which is these people who go on and on about how green they are, but mm -hmm. are totally clueless about the actual environment and actual nature. Anyone who knows anything about nature understands that fire is a natural part of forest life. You go to the beautiful Sequoia National Park here in California, they tell you in the visitor center, fire is part of a healthy forest. It used to be the case that fires happened and they burned and they uh, affected a small area and that was it. Because we've allowed, through this demented approach to forest management, huge, huge amounts of fuel to be in the forest. Now, when you get a fire, which is always occurring, it becomes a giant fire that produces so much smoke, it goes out of control. Just to give you one fact on this for the climate people, Julie, here in California in 2020, the carbon emissions from these out of control wildfires were actually twice as much as from all of California's power stations. So hmm. if they really w want to reduce carbon emissions, you've got to focus on this forest management question. That's a good po point. Um, the, the Wall Street Journal editorial board suggesting that fighting fires should include overturning the Ninth Circuit's 2015 Cottonwood ruling. Now, that decision requires the Forest Service to consult with the Fish and Wildlife or the Marine Fisheries Service on its land management plans whenever a new endangered species is listed. This effectively buries officials in paperwork and delays projects. Uh, the Ed Board argues that the main culprit for raging fires in Canada and the U.S. is resistance by environmentalists to thinning overgrown forests. Um, you know, this is forest fire season in Canada. It happens every single year. This time, it just happens to be much greater. Um, and then, of course, there's a high pressure system over on the West that's literally funneling it into the United States. Again, I don't know where politics have a place here. Well, what's happened is that bureaucracy has got in the way. It's ex exactly right. That you, th this is a great example of what we need to do. Exactly as you say, get away from the politics and just focus on practical solutions. This it shouldn't be controversial, right? This is how we used to do it going back hundreds and thousands of years. This is how it was done. You would have people who understood the forest, who understood that fire is a natural part of it. You have to keep the forest thinned. If you have all this fuel that accumulates, then the fires burn out of control. That's what we've ended up doing. It's a practical question. The facts are clear. We don't need to be ideological about it. But these days, the Democrats have gone so far to the left, everything is ideological. Everything is part of their obsession with this climate extremism. And in the end, people lose out because in the real world, the facts are just forgotten. Meantime, Californians are actually annoyed because we're talking so much about the Canada fire in New York. And they're like, hello, have you not been watching the news? We've been dealing with this for years and a lot more often and a lot more vast. Yes, exactly. And, that, and, and, and California is the worst example yeah. of that extremism on climate and the environment that has let our forests, which is a huge proportion yeah. of our land here, become so overgrown that when these naturally occurring fires happen, they cause huge problems up and down the state, dwarfing what they're trying to do in terms of reducing emissions. Another mm -hmm. fact for you, in 2020, the emissions from wildfires in California were greater than all of the reductions in emissions for yeah. nearly the 20 years previously because of their climate policies. It doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Not much does these days, Steve. Wouldn't you agree? All right. <laughs> exactly. I totally agree. Steve Hilton, thank you so much for watching, uh, and thank you so much for joining us on the Faulkner Focus. I'm Julie Banderas. Harris is